Hi, family. You're welcome to the Das Carlos TV, your inspirational and comprehensive Bible teaching YouTube channel. My name is Pastor John Kennedy Akutia, your lead teacher and instructor on this channel. I welcome you once again to our channel. If you are new to the channel and this is your first time, remember to do us the honors to subscribe to the channel. Let us grow the numbers and then also turn on the notifications so that when we post a video, you will be notified duly and then share and like our videos and then also let us interact. Ask your questions, anything you don't understand or anything you doubt, feel free. It's a discussion platform. Let us discuss and let us begin the conversation. And so this morning we are continuing with our series of teaching on Satanology, the doctrine of Satan. And so this morning, quickly let me chip in. This morning my wife asked me, so this thing you are teaching about Satan, do you think people need it and uh, what is the importance of it? Then I told her, you, there is no prayer you pray any day and you don't bind the devil, you don't bind Satan. Then I said, there are many of your kinds there who also bind Satan. Things are chasing them and we need to expose the person or the personality behind these spiritual harassments that people have no peace, people have no rest, people cannot sleep. And so we need to expose him. So Jesus said, we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. It means we are not supposed to be ignorant. And if we are not going to be ignorant, then somebody must expose this arch enemy of our faith. And now I've considered a number of scriptures. The Bible says in a, the book of 1 John, he said, for this purpose, chapter 3, the verse 8, he said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. If the main purpose for which the Son of God was manifested was for the destruction of the works of the devil, then I believe that it is important to expose that devil for us to know him, his everything, and then his very works which Jesus Christ came to destroy. And then when you read in Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus was talking of building the church, he said, I will build my church. And immediately he juxtaposed it with a, a persistent warfare that the church is going to be involved. He said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What are these gates of hell and who is behind the gates of hell? So we need to expose this arch enemy of the believer and arch enemy of God and anything godly. And so I believe it is not out of order to teach about Satan and then his works comprehensively. And when we know our enemy, we know his personality, his everything, his origin, his existence, his activities, and then we know his limitations and then our victory, then we can engage in comprehensive and successful warfare and then we can have victory. So I believe it's important to know about him. And so it's not out of order. Besides, it is one of the major doctrines of the Christian faith and it is important for us not to be ignorant. So that notwithstanding, we are continuing our study. And like I just said in 1 John 3, 8, he said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And so in this uh, video and the next one we'll be looking at, we are going to be looking at the activities of Satan, otherwise the works of Satan. And this is quite loaded, so I'm going to divide it into part one and part two. So in this video, I'm doing activities of Satan, part one, and then in the next video, I'll do the activities of Satan, part two, so that we can comprehensively cover all his activities as much as we can. And so thus far, we have considered the existence, the origin, the personality, the names of Satan. Now let us examine his activities or his words. Just what does this ex-prince of paradise do? We shall see that whatever else he may be accused of, Satan can never be charged with laziness. Christians can afford to be lazy, like a desica, carefree, but Satan can never be accused of laziness. He appeared before heaven, God asked him, where are you coming from? Open I said, from going up and down and to and fro in the earth. He is a busy being because he knows his time is short. And so what are the activities of Satan? We want to look at the first activity in this part because it is quite extensive. And this activity we are looking at is, number one, he imitates God. Satan 
imitate God. So we are going to look at the imitation of God by Satan as a comprehensive activity. How does he imitate God? And I'm going to show you many of the ways through which he imitates God and he wants to be like God. Imitation may well be most sincere form of flattery. You see, when we say he is imitating God because he hates God, so why is he imitating or trying to imitate the person he hates on one hand? So that is it, a flattery on one hand because he hates God. But on the other hand, he possesses an obsession to be like God. And that is one of the things or the main reason why he fell. When we looked at the origin of Satan, he said, I will ascend onto the hill. I will rise up above the stars. I will be like the most high God. So that is his major obsession. He wants to be like God. Even though he hates God, he wants to be like God. And that is why he led the insurrection or the rebellion in heaven and carried one third of heaven's host and brought them down. It is because of this obsession that he possesses wanting to be God. So he has counterfeit of everything God is and God has. But the irony is that God offers this same thing to us freely, pricelessly, privilege us. This thing that Satan is obsessed, obsessed with and then he has desperately and unsuccessfully sought after in heaven and was cast down. This likeness of God. Look at First John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth not him, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When he appears, we shall be like him. Satan has an obsession to be like God, but God has offered this one to us freely, and that is Satan's madness, and then he wants to oppose God in every way, and he wants to imitate God. So let's quickly look at how Satan imitates God. So we are answering the question, how does Satan imitate God? Number one, he has a false trinity. We know that we said God is one, but he is expressed in three persons, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Satan also imitates this nature of God. So he has a false trinity. In Revelation chapter 13, the verse 2, the Bible says, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of bear, a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and a great authority. And then the Revelation chapter 16, the verse 13 says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So we see the evil trinity here, the dragon, the beast, and then the false prophet. When we get to eschatology in the book of Revelation, we'll look at what these beings are, who the dragon is, and what the false prophet is, and the, the beast is. We'll look at that in another series when we get there. So the true trinity consists, of course, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But Satan mimics this heavenly trial with his own hellish treason. And in this terrible trinity, he assumes the part of the Father. The Antichrist is likened to the Son, and the false prophet is likened to the role of the Holy Spirit. So that is the first imitation. He imitates the Trinity of God. Then number two imitation of Satan is that he has his synagogue. We know that God has a synagogue, but Satan imitates that and he has his own synagogue. When you read your Bible, Revelation chapter 2, the verse 9, the Bible says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. I know the blasphemy of them which say, that they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So Satan has his synagogue 
called the synagogue of Satan. That is the second imitation of Satan. Number three, he has his doctrines. So God has his doctrines, like we are teaching one of them in this series. And look at First Timothy chapter 4, the verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So we have doctrines of devils. So Satan has a counterfeit of the doctrine of God, which is the doctrine of of devil so that is the third imitation of satan and some of these doctrines taught in satan school of systematic theology would be free love abortion or demand on demand homosexuality salvation by works evolution and many other christ dishonoring creeds of our day so there are many of such false doctrines that go on maybe we'll look at that in a subsequent teaching number four he has his mysteries so god has his mysteries he said nevertheless the mystery said the mystery of godliness the mystery of godliness so god has his mysteries and satan imitates that and he has his own mysteries as well revelation chapter 2 the verse 24 but unto you i say and unto the rest in tarthira as many as have not this doctrine and which have not the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, the depths of Satan. So we are talking of the mysteries of Satan. When you go down, he said, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he taketh out of the way. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the verse 7 says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So in Revelation 2 24, we see the depths of Satan. And the word depths there talks of mysteries or the deep things or the secret things. The Bible talks of the secret things and the deep things of God. Satan also has his deep things and secret things. That is the imitation of God. And then number five, he has his throne. We know God has his throne and Satan has an imitated throne as well. He says, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. Revelation chapter 2, the verse 13. So Satan has a dwelling and he has his seat there. And that is Satan's throne. So Satan sees that God has an exalted throne and God is enthroned. So Satan wants also to be enthroned. So he has his imitated throne. All right. So that's it. And then when you read on the Revelation chapter 13, the verse 3, verse 2 also it said, And the beach which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as a feet of bear, and his mouth as the mouth of lion, and as a dragon he gave his power, and his seat and great authority. So we see Satan, the dragon, has his seat, which is the throne. That is a fake one. And then number six, he has his kingdom. So that's the sixth way Satan imitates God. He has his kingdom. Luke chapter 4, the verse 5, and he said, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. When we were doing the purpose of a redemption, and we talk of redemption regained, we looked at the fact that the kingdom was man's and the man transgressed and transferred it to Satan. And so Satan is called the God of this world and the prince of this world for now until Jesus finally destroys him and man takes absolute dominion over the earth again. So Satan has his kingdom and the kingdom of darkness is there. Apart from our physical world, he rules over. He has a demonic kingdom that Satan rules over. 
I cannot go into that mystery for now because that's not the purpose for this video. Often the question is asked whether Satan really had a right to offer the Savior the kingdoms of the earth. And the answer is, in a very real sense, he did because man gave it to him. And Jesus himself referred to him as the prince of this world. He said, hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. John 14, 30. So Jesus recognized him as the illegal, though rightfully because it had been handed over to him, but illegal owner or temporal owner of the kingdoms of this world. And like I said, apart from the physical kingdoms, we have the spiritual dark world or the kingdom that Satan rules over. And so you can also rule, look at the Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in the heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world, kingdoms, not one, so not kingdom, kingdoms of this world, are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So for now, the kingdoms of this world belong to Satan. So we have our physical world, which is a kingdom. We have the spiritual world. We have the marine kingdom. We have the aerial kingdom and different demonic kingdoms that Satan supersedes and rules over all those kingdoms. We'll look at those ones in subsequent series of teachings when God gives us life and grace for that. The seventh way Satan imitates God is he has his worshippers. So Satan has his worshippers. Revelation chapter 13, the verse 4 says, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So Satan has his worshippers. God has his angelic worshippers. We worship God as man created in his image for the purpose of worshiping him. And so Satan saw that in heaven, and so he has created an imitated version, and so he has his worshipers. That is the seventh way Satan imitates God. And then number eight, he has his angels. So God has his angels. Satan has imitated that one. He has his angels. Revelation 12 verse 7 said, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. They were angels of God because he's not a creator. He cannot create angels, but he influenced them, subverted them, and turned one third of the heavenly angels after him. So Satan legitimately has his own angels. So Satan imitates God by having his own angels as well. In a previous verse, in the verse 12 of the same uh, Revelation chapter 12, the verse 4, he says, John seems to indicate that Satan may have persuaded a full one-third of heaven's angels to join with him in his foul revolt against God. And that is what he said. He still drew one-third of the stars of heaven. Those are the angels. Anytime we talk of the stars of heaven, it is a metaphoric language. It talks of angels. So if he draws one third, it means he was able to persuade and influence one third of God's original angels. So Satan has his angels. That is the eighth way he imitates God. The ninth way Satan imitates God is that he has his ministers. So God has his ministers. We are the ministers of God, the ministers of the gospel. Satan has imitated this attribute or aspect of God. He has his ministers. Second Corinthians chapter 11, the verse 15 says, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So you can see he said, it is not great thing if his ministers, whose ministers, Satan or the devil's ministers, are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. So the ministers of righteousness here refers to God's ministers. And then Satan has an imitated version. He has his own minister. He said, but their end shall be according to their works. Number 10, 
way Satan imitates God is that he has his miracles. He has his miracles. Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the verse 8 and 9 says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and wonders. Certain false doctrine or certain false religious leaders have deceived multitudes of people because of their apparent ability to perform genuine miracles. But the scripture declared that the devil also possesses this power. Hear the warning of Jesus Christ on this matter. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful th works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. This is Jesus' own word. So there are many people who wear false miracles, false signs and wonders. And when you read Revelation, it said one of the signs in those days is that they will work signs. And if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. But God will shorten those days to save the elect. Because the devil is going to give power to the Antichrist, that is the beast and the false prophet, and he will work lying signs and wonders, which could even deceive the very elect and the believers. And so Satan has his own false miracles. That is the tenth way he imitates God. Eleven, he has his sacrifices. First Corinthians chapter 10, the verse 20 says, But I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So Satan has his sacrifices just as God has his sacrifices. Number 12, last but one, he has his fellowship. So the 12th way Satan imitates God is that he has his fellowship. 1 Corinthians 10, 20 says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God, and I will not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So we have fellowship of devils or fellowship with devils, and so Satan has his fellowship. That's the way, the same way the Bible says we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We should fellowship one with another. Satan also has his fellowship as an imitation of God's fellowship. Then the last one we want to look at for the sake of time, number 13, he has his armies. Revelation 19, verse 14 says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So you see, this is talking of the armies of Christ. So Jesus Christ was on the white horse and the armies which were in heaven followed him. But look at verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Who? So you see the verse 14 of Revelation chapter 19. We saw a mystery, a man riding on a white horse his name was the word of God. And then the Bible says, the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in white linen, white and clean. And then we see a counterfeit here in verse 19. And I saw the beast. That is the second person in the evil trinity, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse 
and against his army. So you see, God has his army and Satan has also organized an army for himself as an imitation of God's original army. These infernal armies will someday be soundly defeated by Almighty God at Armageddon. Thus we see through these 13 examples just how Satan imitates God. So the first activity of Satan is imitation. And I've taken you through 13 comprehensive ways that Satan imitates God. And this brings us to the end of part one. In the part two, I'll bring you to speed with the other activities or works of Satan. And then we'll see how this experience of Eden works and then activities that he uses to execute his evil and diabolic plan thanks for watching i remain your friend pastor john kennedy remember to subscribe to the channel turn on the notification like our video share if you are blessed with these instructions we are giving share with friends share on your social media platforms and let us grow the channel above all leave a comment for us and then we will respond god bless you i'll see you in the part two of activities of Satan.